What's up folks, it's Matt with Texas Edge Home Inspections. Man, it is a windy day, but I am out here on a pre-pour home inspection. So what that is, is a inspection that takes place just before they place the concrete. And these phase construction inspections are meant to be done just before they're going to cover everything up where it will never be seen again. And so we look at a ton of things during these inspections. I'm gonna take you through and show you just some of the things that we look at during this inspection. And so come along with me and take a look. One of the first things I noticed whenever I started doing this inspection today was this, these post tension cables, all of these pink cables here, these are post tension cables, okay? And that's what's strengthening the foundation here. We've got tension cables and we have some rebar in a few areas. And we look at this uh, based on the plans to make sure it's all placed where it's supposed to be based on the design plans. And right here, you can see that we have some damaged sheathing. In addition to that, it's not supported very well, but this sheathing is exposing the metal cable inside. And that definitely needs to be sealed up to where that, that cable is not gonna sustain any damage from weather and whatnot. This is the type of thing we look for. We got that going on here. We've got a little bit over here. And I even saw some right here. This is even worse right when I stepped in here. We also have some areas like this. This is the moisture barrier here. And uh, this has a rip in it. You can see this is supposed to be intact fully. And so if we have big rips and tears in it like this, it's not going to be able to do its job. So they can just seal this up with some tape. Uh, we have a bigger one back over here. And over in this section here, we've got an area where wherever they overlap, they're supposed to overlap by six inches. And if they can't make it six inches, then they can be taped. But you can see they didn't overlap six inches and the tape that they put down isn't really doing anything either. So we definitely need to do something in those areas. Right here is another example right here where the, they just, they tried to tape it. They actually got a decent overlap here, but they tried to tape it, but uh, it didn't tape down very good. So they could redo that and make that a little bit better. Now, at least I wanna point out that this blue tape you see here, this is some decent stuff. This is a poly type material and it will sustain being in moisture. And so it won't deteriorate whenever it, it gets wet. And that's great because if you look back over here on this side, we have the post tension cables, the live ends where they go through the, the form boards over here. And what they've done is they've duct taped the exposed metal ends. And since we've got duct tape there, I mean, duct tape will not hold up at all. It's not gonna do a good job in moisture at all. The second it starts to uh, be get in the elements at all, any type of moisture, it starts to deteriorate immediately. So that's just not a great material. It has for a long time been an accepted material, but it is not a great material to do that with. And we really should be using a tape more like this blue stuff that we see around here. All right, so right here, you see something a bit more significant than just tape, okay? So we do have a hole in the, in the moisture barrier here, and we even have some holes underneath this plumbing pipe down here that could be taped up a little bit better. But really what I'm concerned about is this plumbing pipe itself. And so all these plumbing pipes, all these drain pipes that go through the, the, the beams here are protected by an outer sleeve. And so they have a, a bigger piece of pipe put around the drain pipe to protect it. And this sleeve has been damaged. At some point, it's been cracked and damaged. They covered it with mastic and tape and everything, but that's just not good enough. Uh, the sleeve basically is useless now, and this is a really good time. In fact, this is pretty much the only time to get this replaced without costing a lot of money and jackhammering up the foundation. We definitely want the sleeve to protect that drain pipe. You definitely do not want a drain pipe to be cracked within your slab. It is expensive. It is a big deal. And so this is a great time to catch this and they can improve it before things get too far along. Now, everywhere you turn on this site, there seems to be more and more of that moisture barrier that's sliced open or torn open that needs to get repaired. But really what I'm finding is a whole lot of these post tension cable chairs. These are the chairs that hold the post tension cable in place. They hold it up off the moisture barrier and they hold it the proper depth between the moisture barrier and the top of the slab. And you see a lot of them that are just crushed and not supporting the, the tension cables properly. And so they need to come through here and they're going, this is going on everywhere. We have a couple of areas also where we have some tension cables. They're supposed to be supported and tied together at every intersection. And we definitely have a couple of them that are not tied together. Although they've done a pretty good job of supporting the intersections. But I tell you, there are so many of these tension cable chairs that are just crushed. And that's just gonna make the the post tension cable sit flat right there on that moisture barrier. It's not gonna hold it where it's supposed to, or it could literally uh, float up towards the top. I've seen it where I walked into uh, areas of the slab and you could actually see the tension cable. That's not good, very difficult to repair. And so, yeah, they need to get these things, all of these broken and smashed chairs need to be replaced. So what we have here is, is another plumbing pipe going through the beam and 
this is just this is really to me just a poor design. Uh, we've sleeved part of it, but this uh, the standpipe and everything is going through the beam. And okay, it's got mastic on it and everything, but there's no sleeve. There's nothing to protect that. And so ideally, these should not run through beams. This should be uh, placed in the middle of one of these pads, and so that uh, the, anything that is exposed to the concrete is sleeved. Uh, this can't be. So this really is just a poor design. So what we have right here is we have a post tension cable that's basically in contact with the shower drain here. Now it doesn't need to be in contact with that form board and you can see that they have a post tension chair on one side where this vent pipe is. And I'm not real sure how they're gonna bring it, how they're gonna bridge this gap between the plumbing pipe, the, the drain pipe and the form board, but it needs to be in between there. It, it's, it's almost as if they got the drain too high. Uh, either way this needs to be addressed because that definitely needs to be pulled off that pipe. Now, one thing I do is make sure that all of these form boards are level, okay? And I'm gonna get the zip level out and test that out a little bit later. But I'm also looking to make sure that they are properly braced. And as you can see, we have these diagonal braces running all the way down here. They're actually all the way around the structure. That's actually pretty good. But I don't like the fact that we didn't backfill up against these forms or extend the forms down a little bit further. So we got these big gaps down here. And so what that means is like right now, this right here, this is what's called a float, okay? This is what's going to create what we call a brick ledge the area where the bricks and mortar get stacked on top of it. This house has brick all the way around it. So we've got a float going all the way around it. Concrete comes up to here, and then it, it's going to drop down. This will be your foundation, right? And the, the, the grade will probably go to about right here. And so within a few inches of soil, you're gonna have all this concrete that just is sticking out of the bottom of the forms. You've got this, these boulders of concrete along the bottom here. So if you ever want to plan anything, it's gonna be a, po a, a problem. Plus it's a waste of product, it's a waste of concrete or they might come through here and chip it away later, but then that's just a waste of labor, um, uh, so an overall waste of money. I, I just wish that they would do something about either backfilling or extending this form down so they wouldn't have these gaps, because we got these gaps going all the way around this side here today, so not really happy about that. So another thing is just about everywhere I look in the excavations here in the beams, there's garbage. And I mean, the wind is blowing terribly, right? So it's probably blowing some things around and it's going to continue to do that. But we want to bring up that there's trash in these excavations because we want them to get that out before they pour the concrete. We, want, we, want, we don't want trash on our foundation. I, I go through here sometimes and find uh, bottles and things that uh, are, are in the sidewall of the foundation. Let's get all that stuff out of here before we pour the concrete. That's part of what we're doing here. One thing that I want everyone to know about this type of inspection is it's never going to be absolutely 100% perfect whenever they put this concrete down. But we are trying to get it as close as possible. As long as they care that we get it as close as possible, and I put my eyes on every little thing here, then we can get it very, very close to perfect, and it should perform very, very well. All right, so it's time for the worst part. I'm gonna take my zip level, I'm gonna set it over here on the corner, I'm gonna get uh, set it to zero, and then I'm gonna measure the forms and make sure that we're level all the way across, and then I'm gonna measure how deep the pad is and so we're looking for a minimum of four inches uh, depth of concrete all throughout uh, we do have a string level over there but i just like to do it with this then i'm going to measure the depth of the beams with this tool as well and then i got a uh, a square that i'll come out here and, and approximately measure the width of the beams because all of that is in the plans and we're we're going off of what is on the plans to make sure this matches up so i hate doing this because this i got a hundred foot cable here i'm going to break it out and it's going to get caught on a million things and uh i don't know it's just how it goes it's part of the job we gotta roll with it, so let's do it. The first thing I do is pull out a ton of cable because I only wanna do this once and I wanna be able to look at the entire property without going back and pulling more cable. Next, I set my home point to zero. By the way, I know that my device flashes cord. I have talked to Zip Level about this and I do need to send it in for service. However, uh, this just started happening and they said I have a lot of use before it actually starts to give me some inaccurate readings. So I'm gonna hang on to it for a little while before I send it in for service. One thing they don't tell you whenever you go to become an inspector is to make sure you stay up on your tetanus shot. Piece of rebar got me. I'll live though. Now it's time for my other least favorite part, wrapping up the cord. While it's not my favorite thing to do, it is important to maintain and take care of your expensive tools. All right, you guys, that's not all I'm gonna do. Uh, first of all, I got a few more things to finish up on site. Then I gotta go to my truck and write the report, you know, the real exciting stuff. But I am done messing around with this wind and this camera. So I am out of here. 
this was not meant to be an educational or or uh, instructional type video, more just information. I just want you to know what kind of goes into these type of inspections, why they're done, and what kind of things we're finding. All right, guys, I'm gonna go finish up this report. Matt with Texas Edge Home Inspections, call me for your basic instruction, your final inspection, your warranty inspection, just call me, okay? All right, thanks, bye.